Welcome to the YouTube lecture series of the Mechanical Engineering Society. I am Glenn, your tutor, and this video will be all about Fluid Me, hydrostatic force on a plane area. When a material is submerged in a fluid, compressive forces act on the material surface. As we know, the pressure acting on a surface is perpendicular to that surface. And for fluids at rest, like large bodies of water, shearing stresses are negligible. Furthermore, pressure varies linearly with depth for incompressible fluids like water. Therefore, if a material is submerged in water, its upper face will have equal amounts of pressure acting on it, and so will its other faces. However, if the submerged material is not in a horizontal position, then the pressure acting on one face of it will be exposed to varying pressure. The deeper or lower the material is relative to the free surface, the higher the pressure. Free surface is the boundary between which two homogeneous fluids meet. To illustrate free surface, in these two diagrams, the free surface can be found at the triangle diagram shown. In the third diagram, the free surface, as written, is also found on the triangle diagram written. It is the portion of the fluid that meets with air. And also in the diagram, as we can see, the material is vertically placed, and the pressure, represented by the arrow lines, increases as the material goes down or deeper relative to the free surface. For horizontally placed materials relative to the free surface, the equation for pressure is equation number one, which is equal to force over the perpendicular area of the pressure. For materials that is submerged at an angle relative to the free surface, the equation for pressure is equal to specific weight or gamma times the height. And take note that the specific weight for water is a constant value, which is 9.81 kilonewtons per meter cube. If we combine equations 1 and 2, we can derive an equation for the force. The equation for the force would then be equal to gamma times h times the perpendicular area. In this diagram, we can see that forces are being exerted on its top layer. And we can represent those small forces with just one resultant force. In this case, the material is horizontally placed relative to the free surface. Therefore, the resultant force will just be found at its centroid, which is at the center of the length of the material. Therefore, we can use equation 1. For materials submerged at an angle relative to the free surface, the equation to be used is derived by combining equations 1 and 2 to find the resultant force. The equation would be FR is equal to the specific weight times height times area. In this next figure, a material is submerged at an angle relative to the free surface of the liquid. The force exerted by the fluid on the plane is greater the deeper the plane is, and the force is less on the upper parts of this material. Therefore, one can say with confidence that the resultant force, which is the single point force that best represents all the forces acting on a face or plane of a material is located further down the middle of the material. Y P is the straight line distance of F R and the free surface. Y C is the straight line distance of the material center and the free surface. It should be noted that these distances are perpendicular to the forces. Here is one example that utilizes the concepts that were discussed earlier. The problem states that a rectangular plate submerged in water has dimensions 1.5 meters by 1.8 meters, with the 1.5 meter side as the one facing the right side. The problem states that it requires us to determine the magnitude of force on one side, which is the left side of the plate and the depth to its center of pressure if the material's top edge is touching the water surface, which is the free surface. The free surface will always be represented by a triangle pointing to this surface. The material has a length of 1.8 meters. 
In this topic, it will be a convention that from the free surface going down, y or the distance is positively increasing. Furthermore, the material submerged vertically or 90 degrees, which is represented by theta, is relative to the free surface. If the force the material is experiencing is then increasing as the part of it is located further down and away from the free surface, as represented again by the larger arrows. As most of the force is distributed at the lower part of the material, the resultant force can be said to be at this point. y to absolute p is the perpendicular distance from the free surface to the resultant force. To obtain a more accurate solution for the resultant force, integral calculus is used. The equation is the differential of F is equal to gamma times sine theta y and the differential of A, which is to be equation 4. We then get the integral of differential of the force from 0 to the resultant force and the integral of y from 0 to 1.8. The variable y will always represent the length of the material that is affected by the compressive forces from the fluid. When we look at the left perspective of the material, which we will call as the front view, this is the face that is affected by the compressive force. Then, we can see the 1.5 meters given in the problem. It is the length along the material that starts from the whiteboard and goes into the whiteboard like when we studied the right-hand rule for the direction of vectors during our physics classes. dA is the area of the material that has the compressive forces being solved in the problem. It is equal to 1.5 meters, which is constant because at the same elevation, the compressive forces will be the same. And then this is multiplied by dy. In the same phase as where the forces are pointing to, you can consider a very small strip along this face. dA represents the shaded part, which is the strip. Going back to the equation, if we get the integral of both sides, on the left side, we will get fr minus 0, which is simplified to fr. And on the right side, the integral of y is y squared over 2, which is then evaluated from 0 to 1.8 inserting all the known values like gamma as 9.81 since the given fluid is water, theta is 90 degrees, and B is 1.5. And cancelling the relevant units of each of these values, we will arrive at 23.8 kilonewtons. To solve for the next value, which is the force's depth to the center of pressure of the material, we shall go back to equation 4 and multiply both sides with the variable y subscript p. After integrating first the left side, we get fr. Then, we integrate the right side of the equation, which will yield y cubed over 3, and evaluate it from 0 to 1.8. Isolating yp, we will get the following equation, and after plugging in the values for the variables in the equation, which are all given in the problem, taking note that fr is the fr that we have just solved, which is 23.8 kilonewtons. We will get the final answer of 1.2 meters as our yp. Now let's try a harder, more complicated example. Say we have the same material as the previous problem. It is a 1.5 meter by 1.8 meter rectangular plate that is submerged at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal, and the 1.5 meter side is pointing into the whiteboard. The 1.8 meters is this length, and the material is tilted from the positive x-axis, which is along the surface of the fluid, and going clockwise to 30 degrees as shown in the figure. The problem also states that the top end of the material is 0 0.3 meters below the free surface. Same as with a vertical material, an inclined material will also have an increasing magnitude of force as we go down along it. However, the increase in this magnitude will not be as large as compared to that of a vertical materials. We can see that the resultant force, Fr, is located further down the centroid of the triangular plate, as again, stronger forces are nearer the lower end of the material as it is located farther from the free surface. 
The problem requires us to, again, find fr and y sub phi. Yp is the perpendicular distance from fr to the free surface. Let us say that ya be the parallel distance to the material, which is along the positive y-axis and is the length from the free surface to the top end of the material as we will need this value later on. As a convention, the positive y-axis must be along the material from the top surface which is a y equals 0 and going down. To find the limits of integration for y, we must first find y sub a as said earlier. To do this, we must construct an imaginary or dotted line triangle and make use of the trigonometric functions. In this case, we shall make use of sine as the values given by the problem are 0 0.3 and 30 degrees. y a is the hypotenuse of the right triangle form. The sine function has an equation of opposite over the hypotenuse. Therefore, sine 30 is equal to 0 0.3 over ya. Transforming the equation to get ya, we get ya is equal to 0 0.6 meters. After obtaining ya, we are ready to solve the resultant force. We are going to use equation 4 again as the given material is submerged at an angle. The difference in the values in the first line of the equation is that the limits of integration of y is now from y a to y a plus 1.8. This is because the compressive forces relative to the free surface starts at a distance y a and ends at a length of y a plus 1.8 meters. These limits of integration are always to have lengths that is parallel to the material or perpendicular to the direction of the forces. Going back to the equation, dA is changed to B times dY and the whole equation is integrated. The limits are then Y sub A, which is 0 0.6 meters up to 0 0.6 plus 1.8 meters, which is 2.4. Plugging in all the values required, which are already known, we obtain FR which is 19.87 kilonewtons. For the second part of the problem, which is to find yp, we multiply equation 4 by y or yp, maintaining the same limits of integration for both the differential force and differential y. This will always be the case for this topic. Integrating the equation, we will get 1.68 meters as our yp. That is all, and we hope that you have understood the topic that was discussed better. Stay tuned for more videos coming from yours truly, the Mechanical Engineering Society.